YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and I'm here to share my post game thoughts from the game that we all watched between the Ravens and the Browns this will be the second time in three weeks that the Ravens will be taking on the Cleveland Browns and the Ravens they they put up a fight they certainly put up a fight especially given the situation that they found themselves in with Lamar Jackson being like the end of the videos out uh, and that was an unfortunate circumstance because he, uh, him and the offense, they did start off a bit slow. Uh, they start off a bit sluggish, uh, and it's nothing that we as Ravens fans aren't used to. We, we know how it goes, uh, but still, even when he went out, it was like, ugh. Because initially, initially when he first went out, I was like, oh, okay, Lamar went out. All right, yeah, he got a little ankle thing. He's, yeah, he'll be fine. Because he was walking on his own and stuff. He was, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, Lamar's straight. Then they brought the cart out, and oof, you know the cart. As any football fan, when you see the cart come for a player on any team, it's scary. And my hope was that they were just being extra cautious with Lamar Jackson. Maybe by the time you see this video, it will have come out uh, the exact um, timeline that Lamar Jackson will be out for, um, whatever the exact injury is, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, until then... It's Tyler Huntley time. And Tyler Huntley, I was very proud of Tyler Huntley in, in a couple of different ways um, in this game. We know that he certainly, he had those two fumbles. And the two fumbles were game changers because one of the fumbles took away at least three points from the Ravens. And the other fumble donated seven points to the Browns. Um, and on the one that took away three points, he's just trying to make a play. That's it. Just trying to make a play. Making something happen because he, he was scrambling pretty well this game. Jadavian Clowney even said it himself. He said, oh, man, the, their backup was faster than Lamar Jackson. I was hoping that Lamar Jackson would come back out there. Now, you, <laughs> you better hope that Ravens don't see the Browns for a third time this season there. But anyway, but what Jadavian Clowney said was actually true. And it's the same thing that we said as well. Tyler Huntley, in this game, he looked faster than Lamar. He looked smoother. He looked, he looked quicker than Lamar Jackson. But like I said, I really do think that Lamar Jackson has been dealing with some kind of injury all year because he has not been running the way that we know that he knows how to run. He hasn't been running like that all year, all year long. But Tyler came out there on his first pass, which he came out there on a third and 10. His first pass, <laughs> I was like, it, it was in Hollywood's area, but it wasn't really in Hollywood's area. But he ended up settling down. Um, he 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 ended up just he ended up doing his thing. When you look at his numbers, his numbers don't even look bad either. They they were twenty seven for thirty eight, two hundred seventy yards, one touchdown, no picks. He got sacked three times, but not bad, not 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 bad at all, especially for a backup quarterback. Like you look at that and you say, "What well, backup quarterback? Where?" So that was um he came in and he he was confident. My guy JT pointed out something to me that I, I really appreciated. And he said he loved the way that Tyler Huntley, that he showed that sort of leadership um, and, and how he really, he had that fire. Because on uh, one of the plays where he got sacked, oh no, maybe not even a play where he got sacked. It was a play where they, I think what they called a, a, a draw on second and 25. Oh, Giro, we got to have a couple of conversations. But whatever the play was, Tyree Phillips had just completely missed his guy. He either missed him or he might not have even went for him. Um, but Tyler Huntley got in his face. He was yelling at him. And I guess maybe, maybe Tyree Phillips was like, oh, man, I, well, I ain't do that bad. I, I don't know what he said. I don't even remember what his body language was. But then Tyler Huntley... He started pointing at the, the video screen. He started pointing at the big screen like, look, look. And it was like, oh, okay. And I know with, with Lamar Jackson, I, I've seen some fans say they, they want to see more out of him. They want to see him be more of a vocal leader. Um, and I think with Lamar, he'll get frustrated. But I think with Lamar, his frustrations, it seems like he'll, he'll put them on himself. And he won't really call out his teammate and not not call out his teammate in no like drama way or no beef or nothing like not that way. But right there on the field, he, he'll put it on himself and you'll see him get mad, get upset. But he, he won't really go up to the teammate and be like, rah, rah, rah. 
he will, it seems like he keeps that in. But Tyler Huntley said, oh no, I'm gonna let you know that this is on you. It's not me, it's you. Uh, so that was something to see. It was nice to see because you want people to be held accountable and not that you, you and that's, that's not even anything where you would be, oh yeah, well I'm doing everything right and it's all y'all doing everything wrong. It's nothing like that. But you want, to, you want to have these quick teaching moments right there on the field. You don't want it to have to wait until, oh, until the game is over. You don't want it to have to wait until practice the upcoming week. No, if you can tell them right then and there where they can improve and it can help your team moving forward, oh, go for it. Go for it. And Tyler did a great job of doing just that. Um, something else that Tyler Huntley did pretty well. Um, he did a great job of making decisions. He snapped the ball, looked, made a decision, threw. He made his decisions quick. And when you do that, you can help out a bad offensive line because that has them blocking for a less amount of time, so less pressure on them, and hopefully as a quarterback, less pressure on you coming from the defense. Oof, because you know. Oh, our offensive line, they give us some pressure now. But I just, I, I love that from him. And he made his decisions quick, whether he was going to the deep ball, whether it was a short ball, wh wh whatever it might be. He made his decisions and he made them right away. Now, he did miss. Uh, he did miss a couple of touchdowns to Hollywood. He just overthrew him. Um, but again, him not working with the ones, and Hollywood is obviously a one. Um, him not working with the starter wide receivers, I think that that showed itself a little bit in this game. Not too bad, but excuse me, just a little bit. Now, somebody who he did definitely have a connection with and had big trust for uh, was Rashad Bateman. And oh boy, Ravens fans love what we saw from Rashad Bateman in this one. He got his first touchdown, but it, it just seems as if with the refs, when we play the Browns, it's like they giveth. And they take it away. The Brown, the first time we played the Browns, they gave David Njoku a touchdown that was not a touchdown. Now, this time we play the Browns, they take away Rashad Bateman's touchdown that is a touchdown. And it was like, come on now. Let my guy do his thing. Now, the following play, they just gave it to Latavius Murray. All right, go ahead, get a touchdown. Let's go. But I was just like, what? why did they do that? And Tyler Huntley, through this game, he showed, yeah, yeah I, I, I could trust this dude, Rashad Bateman. Like, he was even a fourth and I think it was fourth and six. And instead of going to the deep pass, he ended up throwing to Rashad Bateman. I mean, instead of going for a short play, just trying to get the yard for the first down, he ended up going deep to Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman caught it on the sideline. I forgot what the what the distance was from the first down on that play on that fourth down. But I was like, oh, okay, let's go. And then I think a couple plays later, that's where he threw the, uh, the touchdown to Mark Andrews. So he definitely, um, Rashad Bateman, he flip-flopped places with Sammy Watkins this game. And even, like, they had Sammy Watkins on the sideline, helmet, and I was like, oh, oh, okay. This is the changing of the guards right here. It's officially Rashad Bateman. Now, um, after what should have been Rashad Bateman's touchdown catch, they were like, oh, no, he was down at the one. Mm, okay, whatever. Uh, Latavius Murray ran it in, and then the Ravens, they decided, you know what, we're going to go for two. At that point of the game, the Ravens were down by nine points. And I just, I thought that was such a bad decision to go for two then. Harbaugh, his reasoning was, if you get it, great. But if you don't get it, you know where your, where your team stands. And I just, no, no, coach. No, coach. That, that wasn't it, no. Because, and, and, and I just, there's nothing that can justify going for two in that situation. Why would you put yourself in that predicament? It just didn't make any sense. Like, we, we know that you, you're going to have to get the two-point conversion eventually. Obviously, because if you would have kicked the extra point right then and there, you would have just been down eight. That's one score. And my frustration in this game, that has been a lot of my frustration with this coaching staff throughout this entire season, is their lack of adjusting in the games and their lack of adjusting with their situations. 
Now, a lack of adjusting in, in, in the games is, all right, let, let, let's count on what this defense is doing. Let's count on what this offense is doing. Let's really just play to our, our strengths and let's try to counter their weaknesses. But failing to adjust in situations is knowing what your personnel is. There were some times throughout this season where Wink, he, he got a lot of backups because a lot of guys got hurt and he was playing with them like they were the starters. There were times with Greg Roman. Had, obviously, a lot of guys got hurt in the offense too. But the way that the plays were designed and whatnot, it's like every play ain't got to be something deep. But within this game, the Ravens, they had their backup quarterback in. He wasn't planning on playing this game. He wasn't planning on starting for the remainder of this game. It just so happened that Lamar ended up getting hurt. Again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Tyler Huntley, he ended up coming in, riding out the rest of the game. But I would think that you would do, especially, especially if it wasn't in your plans, but I would think that you would do everything that you possibly could do to make the situation easier on not only your, your, your backup quarterback, but on your defense who was missing Marlon Humphrey, where Jimmy Smith was also out. I would think that you would want to do everything in your power to make it easier on them. But they didn't do that. They made it harder. And I just, I, I, I remember just watching the play live and I was really like, I was speechless because I'm, like, I'm thinking they're really going for two? For what? For what? Why? Why now? Because if you don't get it, it's a two score game. If you do get it, it's a one score game, but I still wouldn't have liked the decision. But I just felt like it was just a bad decision and, and it just made everything that much harder for your team. And it did. Now, it, it almost worked out for him still, despite that. But you didn't even have to be in that situation in the first place. Shout out to them for getting onside kickback. They think that's the first one in like 20 years. It's crazy. I can, I can never get those back in Madden. If I got to get onside kick, I say, oh, well, okay. Well, I'll try it, but I'm not expecting anything. But they got it back. Shout out to Browns, uh, their, their fullback, for running right into the ball. Um, but, yeah, I, I just wasn't feeling that one. But, anyway, Tyler Huntley, proud of him this game. I expect him to play uh, in the next game against the Packers because I don't expect Lamar to play. I think he'll still be out. But, we'll, again, by the time you see this video, maybe they will have come to determination and conclusion or whatnot what, what Lamar Jackson's injury is. So, we'll see when we get there. Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews in this game, he had a very sneaky 100 yards. I didn't even realize he got 100 yards. And then he officially broke the Ravens' tight end receiving yards record. Uh, so shout out to Mark Andrews. Uh, against the Browns, he just he got a way of just making stuff happen. Against the Browns. Them, the, the, them Browns games, are, that's Mark Andrews all day. I know he probably wished he could play the Browns for 17 games out of the year. If he did, he'd probably be the best tight end in football. Um, so shout out to him Because uh, he made Well I think he had a catch with Lamar But he obviously made plays with Tyler Huntley too uh, So it was just It was really really nice to see um, And again with Tyler Huntley Gotta commend his decision making And his quick decision making uh, His scrambling too He had that one play where we were like Hey that's Lamar right there man well, He made literally like the whole Browns defense miss <laughs> So that, that was really nice man. I, I loved it Loved it loved it loved it um, Devontae Freeman, he tried, but today today wasn't his game. Um, it, it wasn't it. Latavius Murray, I only remember him getting one carry. Tyson Williams was active, but, I mean, you know how that story goes. We ain't even got to talk about it. Uh, they had a lot of guys out. They had Patrick Ricard out. Nick Boyle, he was out as well. McCarry, he was out. So they had some significant guys out. Um, but, yeah, they still they made it a game. They got down big. Lost his starting quarterback. And you got to, like, we, we, we have a lot of gripes about this Ravens team. But one thing you got to give them credit for is fighting. They fight. They've only got beat down to a bloody pulp once this year. And that was by the Bengals. Uh, Dolphins were, they, they hung around, though. It, it was a close game for the longest in that game. So, yeah, just the Bengals game where second half Bengals just took off. But for the most part, Ravens been fighting. They've been fighting. Um... So, yeah, the, the special teams, Justin Tucker with the field goals. Man, this guy, he is just too reliable. It don't make any sense how reliable Justin Tucker is. He is just like, 
He is the best kicker in the league. We say this every week. He makes plays every week or makes kicks every week. Does his thing. He just... It's, it's, it's very comforting to know that you have somebody that you can really, really rely on like that. Clutch situations, clutch points. And there was even a field goal where I didn't really agree with the Ravens taking a field goal when they took it, but they, 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 did, they did take it. I thought they should have went for it because it was when they were down 17-0 and they were moving the ball and it was like fourth and I think maybe two or three. I forgot what it was. But they kicked the field goal. And I was thinking, oh, no, he might as well go for it. But that ended up being a, a good decision by them. Um, they just try to chip away, chip away. So, okay, cool. Defense. Defense gave up 17 points. Because remember, seven of Brown's points, they came from that fumble return. So defense gave up 17 points. Defense did their job. They really did. Especially for that decimated defense. No Marlon Humphrey, no Jimmy Smith. Calais Campbell ended up going out too. The run defense, I think they held Nick Chubb to like 60 yards, something like that. It is crazy how this team, their run defense has been this year. It's crazy. Crazy. Because they've still been holding it down. They've been missing this guy, this guy, that guy. But they've still been holding it down. It is the weirdest thing. But we ain't complaining. Um, so, but, but that just, that shifts everything to your cornerbacks. Chris Westry. He gave up some plays, but I didn't. I, he had some really bad calls called against him, man. There was the legal contact. There was the the pass interference, and it was just like, and even Anthony Avery, there was a pass interference they called on him, and I was like, what? Seriously, that? It was just like, wow, man. Um, and then with the Lamar, it yeah, they they supposed to be protecting quarterbacks. They said, nah, Lamar, you ain't protected anymore. And I hadn't even realized it initially when watching it live, but a lot of the team keep it clean. Y'all pointed it out to me like, hold up, that, that hit was low. You ain't supposed to go low on quarterbacks like that and get away with it. But no, NFL said no. No, sir. We ain't calling that. So it's just unfortunate, man. It's really unfortunate. So hopefully, again, Lamar can be back. Uh, but I just I do not want them to rush him. They can't. They cannot afford to rush him. It is just too much on the line, not just this season, but for the whole future. And you do not, as a franchise, and you do not, as a franchise quarterback, you don't want to be rushed, and you don't want to rush him and end up making things worse, not even just for the short term, but for the long term. You, ooh, you can't afford that. Ravens can't afford it for their team. Lamar can't afford it for his contract and the team. They can't afford it. Because if you make his injury worse, then that hurts him for the next season. That hurts his play. That just hurts every, everything. Just it, it would be shot if, if they So they, they can't rush him back. You obviously hope for a negative report on whatever the injury is. And that is, oh, oh, he's nothing. Just a little bit swollen, something like that. But you can't rush him. Cannot rush him. So anyway, Ravens are sitting at eight and five as of this recording, because I'm recording this a couple like two hours after the game. Um, as of right now, the Bengals and 49ers game is still going on. Um, so we are going to have to see how that game goes. If 49ers win, they are up right now and it's 15 minutes left in the fourth quarter. They're up 20 to six. Not very confident in that league. Uh so, I mean, we'll see. I'm not very confident in, in that game, though. I know Bengals, they like catching fire quick, but we'll see. Um, but if the Bengals lose, Ravens would remain first in AFC North. I was saying before the camera died, man, we'd be working this camera like crazy. But anyway, what we, we were saying before the camera died was that we don't really trust these uh, 49ers to hold off the Bengals. And... Now the Bengals just scored, so it's a seven-point game. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I forgot to talk about the fourth down, the last fourth down play that officially ended the game. Uh, where Tyler Huntley threw to Rashad Bateman, and everybody was like, oh, man, it's so short of the sticks. Why would you make that throw? Well, um, my guy JT, he pointed it out to me because I hadn't seen it initially because I was just going off the live reaction or whatever. Like, oh, okay, well, because I was just thinking he had the Browns. They sent it. The Browns were like, oh, a wink. You think you like pressure? <laughs> Check this out. So the, <laughs> the Browns sent it. 
They 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 sent it and um Tyler Huntley he had he can't take a sack. So he just threw it to somebody who he trusted, that being Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman was a little short of the sticks. Game over. But my guy JT pointed out that it looked like Hollywood on that play was supposed to sort of rub his guy a little bit more to, to make Rashad Bateman be wide open for that first down and for some yak as well. So I think Tyler Huntley was probably processing that and thinking that, like, okay, this is going to be Bateman on this play. We got the play designed up. We got it ready. It's going to be Bateman on this play. But – so it was still Bateman, but he said it looked like Hollywood sort of missed his guy. Uh, so, but yeah, man. Overall, like I said earlier, was happy the way Tyler Huntley played. Uh, he played minus the fumbles, of course, and, and again, like I said, he missed the guys. I mean, but those it happens. It happens. I'm not gonna sit up here with all these high expectations for Ravens backup quarterback, but Tyler Huntley. Ravens are in a really good backup quarterback situation because they don't have to change the whole offense. When their backup comes in. So that is just a beautiful thing. And I love that. Um, I do have confidence in Tyler Huntley moving forward. Uh, and I would just I would love to see him go on a crazy. I know it's a lot to ask for. But I would love to see him go on a crazy run. I would love it. Love it. So you never know. You never know what could happen. Anyway, congrats to the Browns. Um, they Boy, they had some hitters out there today. Like, their hitters, though, they were hitting for, like, the first half, first three quarter, but fourth quarter, they weren't really hitting like that. But early on in the game, boy, them boys was out there hitting, man. Uh, Lamar Jackson, in the pass that he completed to Devontae Freeman, Devontae Freeman got whacked. Um, there was a couple other, like, big shots that the Browns were delivering. Grand Delpit, he got one. Uh, some other people got one as well. Uh, but Browns, they end up getting the victory today. They earned it. Baker Mayfield, he was having a good day. Nice pick by Anthony Averitt, though, so... Thanks, Baker, for that one. Good job, Anthony Avery. Anthony Avery, he's going to be getting paid this offseason for sure. He's going to be getting his money cashing in as a free agent by somebody. I don't know who it's going to be, but somebody's going to pick him up, and he's going to get a nice raise. No, this season has been up and down. I think it's been more ups than downs for Anthony Avery overall, um, but he's he going to make some ni a nice amount of money. So shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, the Ravens, I feel like they, they didn't really pressure Baker Mayfield too much. Uh, they did, like, off and on a little bit, but nothing crazy. Um, not how Tyler Huntley was getting pressure. Not like how he had to run a lot, too. And um, he just had to make some throws under pressure and under duress and whatnot. But, hey, that's the 2021 Ravens offensive line for you. So, yeah, man. Um, like we talked about earlier, 8-5. and five. Uh, Could be better. Could be worse, though. Could be better. Could be worse. But they're 8-5. and five. So... They, <laughs> every week, we say they got to tighten up, but, well, you know. So, we'll see how next week goes. I, I, I would expect better from the offense since the preparation should be better uh, from Tyler Huntley. And, again, I, I've been talking like Lamar's already been ruled out for next week. He hasn't been as of this recording. Um, so you ain't going to believe this, but the camera actually died again. And then I was like, you know what? This is the end of the fourth quarter for this Bengals 49ers game. Let me just go ahead and watch it. So, thankfully, the camera is charged now, so we ain't got too much more to talk about. But thank you to the 49ers for taking care of Ravens business that the Ravens couldn't handle again for the second week in a row with some of the decisions that they decided to make. But anyway, the Ravens have been saved yet again and remain in first place in the AFC North. It's the weirdest kind of first place that they could possibly be in. Because it's, it's, like, it's like first place in the AFC North. It's like first place with an asterisk or something. But they are in first place. So it is what it is. Um, next week, <laughs> they play the Packers. Uh, so we'll see how that game goes. But, man, you Ra Ravens, they, oh, my goodness. They got so much stuff to fix. And we keep saying the same thing every week. Ravens keep having the same issues every week. Uh, they And they find creative ways to continue to exploit a lot of those issues. Um, and uh, just hoping for the best, man. I, I've seen a lot of people saying it. We're just enjoying the ride. Enjoying the ride uh, and seeing what ends up happening. And that's exactly what we're doing. Um, it's, it's fun. It's been a very, very fun season. Uh, it's not over yet, still, despite what a lot of fans be saying. It is not over yet, <sighs> but it is certainly crazy. Anyway, team, keep it clean. Appreciate y'all. 
Love y'all. And like Ravens won't be, at least this week, when it comes to being in first place in the AFC North. I'm out. Team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.